Some of our commitments are not made to persons, but involve commitment or fidelity to historic traditions. This is sort of circling back a little bit to what I was saying before, um, or commitments to particular beliefs. And when our fundamental commitments are challenged, the entire structuring of our lives can seem at risk. Um, Christians who disagree over matters of theological or moral significance can turn on one another with extraordinary fierceness. Anybody seen this one? <laughs> Communities, not to mention individuals, do not always handle disagreements well, especially when they're related to important beliefs or commitments. And it's ironic because we're committed to a faith that's centered in love and a crucified Savior. But our, acts, our attacks on brothers and sisters with whom we disagree are really very troubling. We are, in a sense, undone by our strengths. At least sometimes we take our deepest commitment seriously. I mean, that's, that's part of the challenge, right? We actually do oftentimes take our commitment seriously um, and our promises. So the fidelity, though, doesn't always guide us in how to disagree or how to seek solution to the disagreement. And theological and moral disagreements are often made personal and interpreted as betrayal. Mm. And any of you who have survived some of the denominational splits over the last years know that the, the language of betrayal and um, is just uh, very prominent. It's impossible to sustain community if people are not willing to stay in the conversation or at the table during times of significant disagreement. Um, our inclination may be to shut down or to shut out those who challenge us, challenge us at important places. But you can't find resolution if you don't stay with the relationship, at least for the time it takes to understand what the differences are. Some differences may run so deep, I think, that they do affect fundamental identity and communal purposes. But often people sever the relationships before they fully understand what the other um, group of people or whatever are, are arguing, what the disagreements are or their significance. And this, this is important to me because I have survived um, multiple, I've been in multiple communities where there have been um, major meltdowns. Some of them have been theological differences. Oftentimes they've been personal also, sometimes over leadership kinds of differences and so on where there, there are big issues. I think quite often they end up being a combination of theological distinction differences as well as sort of played out in personal identities. Um, but the ones that involve whole communities, um, oftentimes those disagreements take on a life of their own. And um, in the midst of one major meltdown, um, I suddenly had this image of the, the biblical image of devouring. <laughs> Um, came to mind, and you know, scripture uses the image of devouring in a number of different places. Um, it, it describes the devil, our adversary, um, prowling in search of someone to devour in First Peter, of the rich and powerful devouring the poor in the Gospels, and then Paul writes to the Christians in Galatia that if they continue to, to bite and devour one another, they may find themselves consumed. That's what he says in Galatians 5. But in, the ch in church and community fights, I think sometimes the language of devouring is miserably appropriate. Um, our commitment, really, in a very perverse way, our commitment to feeding on Jesus as the bread of life is replaced by sort of a frenzy of devouring one another. Um, in efforts to gain the upper hand or to hold on resource onto resources for the kingdom um, or to win the theological argument or moral argument, sometimes we lose sight of our larger fidelities to Christ and to holiness and to love. Um, and here I am not suggesting that Christians should never disagree robustly. I think we should. I think that's an expression of faithfulness, actually. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly not arguing that tolerance should be our highest value. Good arguments shaped by love and truthfulness and fidelity can build community. Um, and deepen maturity and faithfulness, and alternate or efforts to understand alternate viewpoints before we dismiss them are acts of respect. Um, and challenging one another on important commitments and loyalties can be evidence of love and faithfulness and a desire for deeper unity. 
So sometimes differences are significant enough that they would represent alternative or incompatible visions. Um, and a decision to move forward separately may be necessary. Nevertheless, how we deal with the people with whom we disagree on important matters reveals our own deepest commitments. Um, Jesus, as John tells us, loved his disciples to the end and instructed them to follow him, follow his example of love and sacrificial servanthood. So we're called to love one another in the same way, not by sugarcoating the truth or by avoiding difficult disagreements, but we are never released from the call to love, <laughs> to love fully and completely. That's really our identity as Christians. <laughs>